Hello students of Dynamics, welcome to this video. Today we'll be talking about rigid body Newtonian kinetics. Okay, so we're focusing here on the interaction of forces and motion, hence kinetics. Newtonian is referring to our friend Sir Isaac Newton, essentially in the framework of using F equals MA and some of moments equals I times alpha. And the specific case we're looking at today is in fixed axes rotation. So you recall from our rigid body motion chapter that fixed axes rotation problems, we're looking at a body that is rotating around a single point. Okay, so this would be a fixed axis body. That rectangle would be rotating around this point. Let's call this point, point O. Now I'm going to turn this kind of problem sketch diagram into two separate diagrams, one of them being a free body diagram and one of them being a kinetic diagram. And we know that fundamentally these are equal, just like F equals MA, F is equal to MA, and M is equal to I alpha. So if we have a series of forces, the forces here are kind of arbitrary. Let's say that we have a force here, maybe another force, call this one F2 over here. Let's add a couple onto this body here so we could call that couple C. Now one thing we do need to highlight is that on both these bodies we do have a centroid, call that point G. So we have a centroid and then we also have over here point O. Now coming through point O on our free body diagram we do need to include our pin forces. So call this OY and this here OX. Now it doesn't matter if you put those in the XY and the tangent normal, whatever direction you like to put them in, but make sure they're orthogonal because they are both independent unknowns. And so then moving over to our kinetic diagram, we will incorporate our inertia terms. Now, because we are in fixed axis rotation, it actually makes sense in a problem like this to focus on what's going on, not necessarily in the centroid, but that'll come into play, but also here at point O. So let's go ahead and connect these two points with a position vector. Let's say this is my R of G relative to O. And so if we assume that we have rotation which is positive from the right-hand rule, this would be my mass moment inertia I times my angular acceleration alpha. We additionally then will know that our um, centroidal tangent acceleration, the linear acceleration there of that centroid, needs to match up with this alpha, right? If it's rotating around this point over here. And so we'll know that our acceleration linear of the centroid is going to go up to the left. So call this my acceleration of G tangential. And then normal, we know, always opposes our position vector. So this would be my A G normal or my A bar tangential and my A bar normal, labeled in either way you'd like. So this is our kinetic diagram showing the overall motion of this system. So taking a look at our fundamental equations for these two bodies, we can write that summing forces, now if we're going to write our accelerations in tangent normal, let's go ahead and write our forces in tangent normal as well. We do need to have our axis system matching up across these equations. So some of the forces in the T is equal to mass times A bar vector in the T. That's the same thing as my A sub G, right, the acceleration of the centroid. And then bringing in equations which we used in our rigid body motion chapter, we could also write this as our mass times a cross product. This cross product is going to be the alpha of this body crossed with my position vector of G relative to O. So essentially we're, we're taking a look at what is the acceleration of the centroid from the perspective of that pin. We could do the same thing as for our forces in the N direction, our normal direction. So the force in the N is equal to mass times A bar vector sub N. Once again, substituting in our general equation for our normal acceleration, we're going to write this as the mass times R omega squared in the negative R of G relative to O. Right, the normal acceleration is always opposing that position vector from our point of interest up to the centroid. So those are the equations we tend to use for fixed axis rotation. Now note you could use 
your accelerations in the X and Y would still work out. We just wouldn't have the convenience of being able to write these equations based upon this connecting position vector. Now we could compute our moments around the centroid. We can use the standard equation for that. Some of the moments about our centroid sub G as a vector is equal to my mass moment of inertia about the centroid, so my I bar, and this is going to be times my angular acceleration alpha. Now just a reminder here that on both sides of the equation, both on the left and also on the right, we do need to use positive and negative values that line up with our axis system. And so whether we use an xy axis system, or in this case we talked about using a tangent and normal axis system, we need to make sure that whatever axis system we use, that we write these vectors with positive and negative values according to whichever chosen coordinate system. And like I said, we've actually written these equations to correspond to the tangent normal. But let me also show you that there's a simplified version of this equation that we can use if we're doing everything else kind of related to point O. It turns out that we can write an equivalent equation to this one relative to point O. So to write the full expanded version of the sum of the moments around point O, sum of moments around point O is equal to, same first term here, I bar times alpha as a vector. We need to add in the kinetic moment term, right? And you recall from earlier in this chapter, our kinetic moment term we can write as a position vector. This can be R of G relative to O, connecting my fixed axis pin to my centroid, plus the mass times my a bar vector. All right, so this is my alternative. We talked about kind of either or. We can either write things about the centroid, which would be this version here, or about some other point. In this, in this instance, we chose point O. Now, if I take a look at the two acceleration terms, let me scroll back up to take a look at these. I have a g sub t, and then I also have a bar g sub n. Now what you'll notice is that a bar g sub n actually lies upon that same position vector, that r of g relative to o. And so if we're trying to figure out what's the distance between point o um, over to the line of action of this acceleration, it's going to be zero. Okay, so essentially we could say that there's not going to be any effect on the, of the kinetic moment due to this term. We'd only have our tangential left, and we also know that we can equate our tangential to a cross product of alpha and r. Okay, so let me put that here into words. So one, we can say that a bar vector sub n has no effect on, I'll just put an arrow here, on this kinetic moment term because it lies upon the line of action, the LOA of R of G relative to O, that vector. And two, we can say that our acceleration of the centroid as a vector tangential is perpendicular to this position, position vector, R of G relative to O. So therefore, we can write the value of A bar sub T equal to alpha times the position vector R of G relative to O, which is just that distance between the fixed axis pin and the center. Now, we would need to pick up the sign of this uh, from the right-hand rule if we can continue forward in vector terms, but I'll show you how we don't, even, we don't even need to worry about that. So putting this information back into our equation, we can say the sum of moments about point O as a vector still is going to equal I bar times alpha, and then we're going to have plus... Right, so our acceleration here is going to be alpha times r, and then we have a mass, and I do have a notation error here. I wrote this out as a plus. It is meant to be a cross product. My apologies for that. This is, of course, a cross product of this position vector and my mass times acceleration. And so multiplying these through, I'm going to have two of these position vectors times a mass times an angular acceleration. So that looks like the following. I have R of G relative to O squared times the mass 
times my angular acceleration alpha. So if we dig into this a little bit further, we see that we have an alpha in both terms. So if we have an alpha in both terms, let's go ahead and isolate the alphas. And so we can collect everything else. Tells me I bar plus my distance R of G relative to O times my mass times alpha. So what does this look like? I have a moment of inertia about my centroid plus, I forgot to bring down my squared term, a length squared times mass. If we remember back to earlier, the very first section of this chapter, this is the parallel axis theorem. And it is how we moved the moment of inertia from the centroid to some other point on the body. So it turns out if this is the movement of the moment of inertia from the centroid to 0.0, I can actually write this equation that the sum of moments about 0.0 is equal to my moment of inertia about 0.0, mass moment of inertia times alpha. So just to summarize when this equation can be used, this is valid for a fixed axis point only. If you use it for other points, it turns out about half the time it'll work out all right, and about half the time it won't. So it's a bit of a gamble but it is valid 100% of the time for a fixed axis location, for a body in fixed axis rotation. But for general plane motion, we want to refer back to this original full equation. So this is the full equation for all points. Okay, so when in doubt, use your original equation. If you know you're trying to compute things about a fixed axis point, you're welcome to use this simplified equation. So hopefully that gets you started on thinking about how to compute these Newtonian kinetics for rigid bodies for fixed axis rotation systems. I'll follow up this video with an example. We'll walk through the use of these equations and solve it a couple different ways. Hope you're having a great day.